The most common question that I get since I started my consulting practice seems to relate to QuickBooks and how to set it up to fulfill the gap requirement, that's generally accepted accounting principles on tracking donor restrictions. Well, I'm going to break that down into a multi-part series to help you know the answer to that very important question. Today, we'll be talking about the settings. Hi, I'm Teresa Clark, and I'm a CPA with over 25 years worth of experiences serving 501c3 nonprofits. I've done that both inside and outside of the nonprofit organization. Inside as a CFO and outside as an independent auditor, uh, auditing nonprofits. And so I've leveraged that years, those experiences and wisdom into the consulting practice that I now have serving nonprofits to help them answer their unique financial questions. You can kind of think of me as a strategic partner to help you master the money. You can learn more about me and visit my resources at TeresaClark.com. Okay, as we look at and think about the need for QuickBooks to track restricted funds, I think it's good to back up and talk a little bit about um, what is that all about? What even creates that? So I'm going to open up my screen share here. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what are restricted funds. Well, restricted funds are a concept that comes from generally accepted accounting principles that require nonprofits to report on two things funds with restrictions and funds without restrictions. So funds with restrictions are those that must be spent on a specific purpose or specific project. Now it is possible that in your organization, all of your appeals for support come in a way that is just general to the mission of the organization. If that's true, then you have no restricted funds. Everything is unrestricted or without donor restrictions and you this will not apply to you. But for many nonprofits, they are receiving funds that have a restriction. Maybe it's for a capital project, or maybe it's for a specific um, project that, that they have or program that they have within their budget. So it is not uncommon for there to be the need to track these restricted funds. Okay, next, I want to show you a little bit about, again, this is about generally accepted accounting principles. So it's about the technical guidance for doing your financial reporting. So here's an example of what that report looks like for a sample nonprofit. So it's a statement of activities. Um, on the left side, you'll see here that, you know, you have to report your revenue. So contributions, in this case, I've shown that um, this nonprofit has received $275,000 in donations, contributions, but only $75,000 were actually with a donor restriction. Then as you move down, you have to report all of your expenses by function. In this case, I just said, assume there's a program A, a program B, management and general expenses and fundraising. Well, inside of these expenses here, there are expenses that relate to this $75,000 that was given. And so what we're talking about today is how to track that within the QuickBooks settings. Um, as it, so as you look at this report here, and we'll come back to that in several of the videos that we're going to do in this series, but here you go. This is what it ends up looking like on the balance sheet or the statement of financial position, which is the technical name for this same report in a nonprofit. Um, here, what you're going to see is we need to report on the balances. So what's the ending balance with donor restrictions? And um, this is a condensed version. So we would obviously have some cash inside of those assets that would relate to needing to fulfill this $90. $3,000. So the very first thing we need to do in QuickBooks is we actually need to set our settings to enable this tracking. I recommend tracking restricted funds using the classes setting in QuickBooks. And the reason I recommend that is it, it both applies in QuickBooks to the activity that's going to go into your revenue and expense accounts. And it also then reports on it at the net asset or inside of QuickBooks. It's equity level of reporting. So here is where you make sure that setting is turned on. If you go up to the gear box in the top right corner, you're going to go under your company account and settings, and you're going to turn on classes. And so here's what it looks like. It's down here in the, after you get there, you go to advanced on the bottom left, and then it's going to say categories, track classes, and you're going to want to toggle that button so that it is on. Okay. With that, then you're set to begin using it 
to do what you need it to do inside of QuickBooks. Next video, we're going to cover how to enter their revenue and expenses in a way that it then captures to be able to report on those restrictions. All right. Well, I look forward to this video series. I just want to remind you, if you need one-on-one -on -one help, if it's already too confusing, you're just not sure, jump on my website. You can schedule a strategic consult with me, and I'd be happy to talk about your individual and unique situation.